Hello and welcome to a new video. So in this video I will talk about the skinny graft and the flap and I will explain them in details. So this picture here is of a graft and the second picture is of a flap. So the graft picture is that this patient burned the lower part of their leg and it is treated by placing a graft over the burned area while the second picture is that this patient had a margarine ulcer over uh, their uh, head and it's treated by excising the ulcer and placing a flap. So with that, let's start. So we will start with an overview and then we will explain the graft and then the flap. So skin grafting or flapping is a type of surgery involves transplantation of skin from the donor site to the recipient site. And it has many uses but the main ones is that it is used in transplantation of skin, in extensive wounds or trauma, in burns, in areas of extensive skin loss due to infection, and it is used in transplantation of skin in, sur in surgeries requiring skin replacement, like removal of skin cancers. Uh, now let's explain the skin graft. So the skin graft consists of epidermis and some portion of the dermis that is removed from its blood supply and transferred to another location. So it's basically epidermis plus some portion of the dermis and the blood supply is removed. So no blood supply to the graft. And we have an example here. So this patient had an ulceration over their middle finger and it is treated by excising the ulcer like that and the grafting which end up uh, as that. Uh, now for the skin graft uses, so it is used to close any wound with good blood supply. Because remember, the graft doesn't have a blood supply and the wound has to have a good supply for the graft to live. So grafts also used for temporary closure uh, of wounds and burns. Uh, so basically, if the patient uh, had some burn over their uh, limb, uh, it would be temporarily closed uh, and to allow the skin to grow without getting infected. Uh, so basically in case of allografts given to a patient that keep them covered for two weeks and then they automatically shed because of rejection. Allografts mean that the graft is taken from another person and giving to the patient just to temporarily let the skin grow. And uh, this would automatically shed because remember uh, the allograft would be rejected by the uh, by the recipient body and it would shed. Now also skin graft used to control infection and used to close donor sites in case taken flap from the donor and the site was large it is closed with the graft. So basically when we take uh, a flap from a person and the flap site was big we use the graft to close it. And it's also used in mucosal replacement for the urethra and the oral cavity. Now for the types of skin graft, so we have the autograft, we have the allograft, which is also called the homograft, and we have the xenograft, which is also called the heterograft. So for the autograft means that it is taken from the same person. For the allograft, it is from different human, and xenograft is from different species. Now graft types according to thickness, we have full thickness skin grafts, and we have partial thickness uh, skin grafts. The full thickness is that it contains epidermis and the entire dermis with its elastic fibers. And full thickness skin grafts have elastic properties and the primary contracture which make it good for replacing sites that need elasticity like the anterior elbow uh, joint skin. And now the full thickness uh, graft allows for more, for more elastic fibers to be available in the dermis and this would make uh, the graft become more uh, mobile which make it perfect for replacing the uh, skin over the joints. Uh, now for the partial skin grafts they contain epidermis and varying degrees of the uh, dermis and it is associated with secondary contracture. Now we will explain the primary contracture and secondary contracture. So the primary contracture is the immediate recoil 
of freshly harvested grafts as a result of the elastin in the dermis. The more the thickness of the dermis, the more primary contracture. And the primary contracture is good type of contracture, making graft more elastic and perfect for replacing the skin over the joints. The secondary contracture, on the other hand, involves the contracture of the healed graft due to myofibroblast activity, and it is more in split thickness grafts, as we mentioned. The secondary contracture is bad because it makes the graft more prone to hypertrophic scarring. Now let's talk about the survival of the skin graft. So it depends on the ability of the graft to receive nutrients through revascularization. Revascularization of the skin graft occurs in three phases. Uh, phase one is the serum imbibation phase, which lasts for the first 24 hours after a grafting procedure. When the graft is placed into the recipient bed, binding the graft to the bed, absorption of the nutrients into the graft occurs by capillary action from the recipient bed. So in the first 24 hours after grafting, the graft uh, lives because it, uh, it absorbs the, the nutrients in the, uh, in the recipient bed. The second phase is the inosculation phase. Uh, for the second 24 hours after grafting, in which the vascular network is established between the cut vessels on the underside of the skin graft and the capillary beds in the wound bed. The third phase is the revascularization phase, and in the third, uh, it occurs in the third 24 hours after grafting, and the graft is revascularized through kissing of the capillaries that are already formed in phase two. So basically, when they form in phase two, they would uh, kiss each other in the phase three. So they would uh, reach the uh, final revascularization phase. Now, sometimes the graft fail, and it is due to causes. So uh, the first one is that hematoma under the graft. This would lead to elevation of the graft, and no kissing of the blood vessels occurs. Also, graft fails due to infection, and due to inadequate immobilization. Like in anterior elbow, you want to put back slab to immobilize the elbow for success of the graft. So you basically stabilize the elbow in order to, for, the, for the graft on the anterior elbow to survive. Also, mis-evaluation of the wound that is in bed with poor blood supply or infection and in dependent position. And when the graft is upside down, in thin graft, you can differentiate between the up and down, and you might place it upside down, and it would also fail. Uh, sometimes the wounds are too uh, big, and you don't have enough graft to uh, cover them, and that's when you use the mesh graft. So you, you basically, the graft taken and made into mesh, and it is used in big defects and limited donor area, and also used in high oxidate wounds and in a regular bed of the graft. Like this example here, as you can see, the graft is made into a mesh. Now let's talk about the flap. So unlike the graft, the flap is a transplantation of tissue with its blood supply. And this is an example of the donor area of the flap. Uh, the flap is taken from here, the area over the radial uh, artery is taken, and with it, the radial artery is also taken, as you can see, uh, all the way until the elbow. The flap uses is that it's used in covering recipient beds that have poor vascularity and in reconstruction of the full thickness of the eyelids, the lips, the ears, the nose, and the cheeks, and in bodying body prominences like the heel. And it's also used when it is necessary to operate through the wound at a later date to repair the underlying structures because with the graft, once you operate through the graft, it would fail, but the flap would not. And the flap provides functional motor unit uh, in case of uh, some muscle is dead or not working anymore, you can use the flaps to replace that and the flaps used in controlling infection to increase the blood supply. Now let's talk about the flaps types according to the location taken from. Uh, so according to the location, the flaps are on three types, the local flaps, the regional flaps, and the distant flaps. 
The local flags are taken from the same site as the defect, and there are many types of them. There is the advancement flaps, rotational flaps, and the transpositional flaps. In advancement flap, the flap is advanced uh, forward towards the wound. In rotational flaps, the flap is rotated towards the wound, like this. And in transpositional flap, the flap is transpositioned uh, to the uh, to the recipient area. The regional flap, on the other hand, are from the same region as the defect, like in the arm or in the hand, and the distance flaps is from another region. Now the flaps also classified according to the pattern of blood supply, and they are classified into axial flaps and random flaps. Random flaps, they have random blood supply, there is no well-named artery uh, supplying them, but in the axial flaps, there is actually a well-named artery in the reticle of the flap. Uh, and they also classified, the axial flaps also classified furtherly into island flaps, peninsular flaps, and free flaps. Now the flaps classified according uh, to content also uh, into skin flaps, muscle, omentum, facial, conral, periosteal, and mixed. The flaps also fail, same with the grafts, uh, and the causes for that is that we have intrinsic and extrinsic. The intrinsic is that there is inadequate blood supply to the flap or arteriovenous chance. So in both cases, there is uh, not enough blood reaching the flap and the flap dies. An extrinsic factor is that infection also lead to tissue damage and death uh, and hypotension. This also would decrease the blood supply to the flap, compression, hematoma, and smoking. Smoking may lead to the arteries being sclerosed, and this would make the flap also fail. Now, finally, let's talk about the monitoring of the viability of the flap. It is monitored by clinical tests, chemical, and instrumental methods. The clinical test is that you examine the flap for color and temperature, capillary refilling, dermal bleeding, atropine absorption, and histamine test. The chemical methods is that the fluorescein dye injection and the instrumental is that you check the artery of the flap by Doppler ultrasound, making sure that it is passing the blood well. And there's also the photoplatysomography and the tissue pH, PO2 and PCO2. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support us more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.